Hello. In this presentation, I will show how to obtain the Navid Hartenberg parameters of classic robots used in many academic examples. The aim of the presentation is to solve the full kinematics of some robot manipulators shown in many academic examples using the Navid Hartenberg method. In the following slides, I will explain how to set reference frames for each link and how to obtain associated the Navid Hartenberg parameters. Just to recall, in the Navier Hardenberg method, there are some ambiguities regarding the direction of some axes, and therefore the solution of the parameters is not unique, but they represent the same forward kinematic model. The RPR robot has three joints a first revolute joint, followed by a prismatic joint, and a third revolute joint. The first step that we must solve is the identification of robot links and joints. In the figure on the left, I have indicated which are the links numbered in this case with the letter E from E0 to E3, and which are the joint axes numbered from Q1 to Q3. Next, we must set the position of, and the orientation of the reference frame associated to the robot base. The only requirement is that Z0 passes through the joint 1. In our case, we have positioned this frame at the bottom of the reference link. The next step is to set the z-axis of the remainder of reference frames according to the method we must or they must lay uh, in the uh, subsequent joint. Therefore, z1 is placed in joint 2, z2 is placed in joint 3, and z3 has the same direction of z2 because it's the last axis. We will also set the position of the x-axis. In this case, we must first compute the common normal between zi and zi-1 axis to determine the intersection point with the zi axis. Once known, then we can set the zi, uh, sorry, the xi uh, direction because it has to be in the same direction of the mentioned uh, common normal. So, and no matter the actual direction, the, the, the positive one or the negative one. For example, we have placed x1 axis so that it is per perpendicular to z0 and z1 and the intersection point is the one where joints q1 and q2 intersect. Axis x2 points in the same direction as x1 because joints z2 and z1 are coincident. And we could have choose uh, any arbitrary direction as long as it's per perpendicular to uh, the axis. For the same reason, we have placed x3 in the same direction as x2. Note that the position of the reference frame 2 is totally arbitrary. We have placed it at the end of the link 2, but we could have placed it in, in any other position uh, along the third joint. Reference frame 3 is usually placed at the end of the robot, at the tip of the end effector. Once the x and z axis have been placed, then the y axis come out of applying the right hand rule, as it can be seen. In the table, I show the Denavir Hardenberg parameters associated with the transformations between the reference frames. I usually assume that the configuration provided in the figure is the home configuration with all joint values equal to zero. Please remember that the angle theta is the angle that we must rotate about the, about the um, z i minus one axis so that the x i minus one axis points towards the x i axis. The quantity d i represents the displacement along the z i minus one axis, while the quantity IA is a displacement in the direction of the xi axis. Finally, the angle alpha i is the rotation around the xi axis so that zi minus 1 is aligned with zi. In this second example, we have a PRR robot with one prismatic and two revolute joints, as you can see. The procedure is the same as before. We first identify the links and joints, number from E0 to E3 and Q1 to Q3, respectively. Next, we set the position of the reference frame, usually at the bottom of the robot. 
with the Z0 axis pointing in the direction of the joint one. Then we set the position of the rest of Z axis, each one of the axes uh, pointing to the next joint, and Z3 axis will point in the same direction as the last joint, which is Z2, or the previous joint, which is Z2. Then we place X axis. In this case, all joints are parallel, so the position of each of the remaining reference frame is actually arbitrary. Each frame could have been placed in uh, arbitrary heights, but obviously I have selected the positions that uh, or the origins for the reference frame that belong to actual points of each of the links. The direction of the x-axis is also arbitrary. They could have point in any other uh, direction as long as they are perpendicular to the z-axis. But again, it makes sense to choose them so that they point towards the tip. The y-axis again I'm out as a consequence of applying the right-hand rule. In the denavid hardenberg parameter table, we have, or we can see that, because we have uh, selected uh, the, the the specific positions for the reference frame, many parameters become zero or are directly associated with the separation distances between the axes. If we have chosen uh, the set axis pointing uh, in the opposite direction, then we would have a rotation of pi in some theta parameter and also a negative value uh, for the a parameter. The RRP robot shown has two revolute joints and a final prismatic, prismatic joint. Again, we must identify the links and joints of the robot and set the position of the reference frame of the base. The Z axis must be contained in the direction of the subsequent joints. Therefore, Z1 will be placed on joint 2, while Z2 will be placed on joint 3. And Z3 has the same direction as Z2. The X axis must be perpendicular to the Z axis and to the previous Z axis. Therefore, X1 will point as shown in the figure as it's, it's a direction that is perpendicular to Z0 and Z1. The X2 axis will point up or down because the normal comma or the common normal uh, of Z1 and Z2 is the vertical line coinciding with the joint 1. X2 in this case uh, it's pointing upwards but pointing uh, downwards is also an option. Anyway, I have also decided that X3 points in the same direction as Q2. Uh, uh, sorry, is X2. In the table of the number of parameters, we can observe how parameters theta and alpha values have values uh, from different from zero as a consequence of the rotations in X and Z axis. As I have mentioned, if we have selected opposite directions for Z or X axis, then we would probably have some positive values on those parameters. But in the end, the result would, the result would be the same. The RRR robot has three revolute joints. Its structure is exactly the same as the first three joints of the vast majority of industrial robot manipulators. Joint 1 is a vertical joint, while joint 2 and 3 are horizontal and parallel joints. Following the, the previous ideas, uh, then we just first need to identify the links and joints of the robot and then set the position of the reference frame 0. The Z axis again always points in the direction of the next joint and the X axis uh, are always perpendicular to the Z uh, axis and also to the previous joint. For example, X1 axis is perpendicular to Z1 and Z0, pointing in the same direction as X0. While, again, as before, X2 and X3 axis will point upwards, because the common normal is the vertical line, which is also again coincident with Q1. As a consequence, we also can place the y-axis, applying the right-hand rule, and 
obtain the denominator hard number parameters that are shown in the table. I would like to emphasize that for this type of robot, Z3 points in the same direction as axis Z2, while in a real robot manipulator with 6 degrees of freedom, Z3 would point in the direction of the fourth axis, which is different from the one shown here. In this final example, we will study the Cartesian robot with three prismatic joints. In this case, as you can see, we have chosen joint one as the one on the left side. Although, due to the geometry of the robot, we could have chosen any direction parallel to Q1. In fact, chosen one, the, the, the one in the middle that intersects with axis two and three would make things much easier, but for conveniences, I have selected the one on the left, so the reference frame of the robot base is necessarily placed on this axis. In this case, I have selected the corner of the robot frame as the reference frame 0. The difference is that if we place uh, axis Q1 in a different position, then we have uh, uh, to consider the robot, play, uh, the robot base to be in a different position. So following uh, with the example, the next thing to do is to set the direction of the z-axis as shown in the figure on the left. Then we need to set the direction of the x-axis, always perpendicular to z-i and z-i-1. Axis 3 in this case could have been chosen with any arbitrary direction, as long as perpendicular to z-3, because z-2 and z-3 are parallel, but in my case I have decided to select that specific direction so that x0 and x3 are pointing in the same direction. And finally, we will be able to set the y-axis following the right-hand rule and obtain the dynamic heart and parameters as shown in the table. As you can see, there are many parameters different from zero because my preliminary decision for selecting the position of the reference frame zero. In this video, I have shown several academic examples to learn how to obtain the number of parameters and how to set the reference frame for each link. Thank you very much.